Today, we're gonna to take a look at circuit tracers, how we can use them to not only trace wires and walls and locate circuit breakers, but also to find shorts, opens, ground faults, and splicing errors. Hey guys, John here with Backyard Maine. I've worked in the electrical industry for over 40 years as a licensed electrician and then an electrical engineer. And I know how frustrating it can be to troubleshoot electrical issues when wires are hidden in walls and electrical panels are poorly labeled. A circuit tracer can be a very helpful tool in these situations. Ideal, a well-respected name in the electrical industry, was kind enough to send me their two new Sure Trace circuit tracers to test out and that's what we're going to do today. The thing is, I only need one of them, so I'm gonna give the other one away to one of you. And Ideal liked the idea so much, they offered to give away a tracer as well. So two viewers will win new circuit tracers. I'll let you know how to win a little later on in the video, so stay tuned. Let me quickly show you what's included in a few features and then we'll start tracing circuits. The two I have here are the SureTrace 61946 and the 61948. They're very similar, but the 948 has a little more capability and a few added features. There are two components to a circuit tracer, the transmitter and the receiver. The transmitter sends a signal over the conductors and the receiver picks up that signal and measures its strength. They can be connected to live or dead circuits and the signal will not affect sensitive electronic devices. The transmitter on the 946 is CAT3 rated for single phase or three phase power up to 480 volts. And the 948 is the same, but it's rated for up to 600 volts. They can be used on DC circuits as well. The transmitter on the 948 has a few additional features that aren't available on the 946. It displays voltage level and whether PPE is required. It provides AC voltage or DC polarity indicators and it has a continuity function like you find on a multimeter. The receiver on the 948 has a few additional features as well. It has a super bright display with a wide viewing angle. It's equipped with a NCV or a non-contact voltage tester. It has an audible volume control function, a built-in flashlight, and a tight sight display on the bottom for use in tight spaces. They both come with the same test lead kit. Oh, and the 946 comes with a soft case and the 948 comes with a hard shell case. But for tracing circuits and finding issues, they both function in the same way. I'll link both of them down in the video description and in a pinned comment in case you wanna check them out. Okay, let's grab the 948 and test it out. The transmitter has an on off button and black and red test lead connection ports. The receiver has four buttons. The top button is a sensitivity adjustment with four settings. The next one down turns the audible tone on and off. Then we have our non-contact voltage tester button and on the bottom, the on and off and flashlight button. Tracing circuits is like a game of hot and cold. The closer the receiver gets to the conductors carrying the signal, the higher the signal strength reading on the display. And the further away the receiver gets, the lower the signal strength on the display. The receiver allows us to adjust the sensitivity to best fit the task. You'll see what I mean in a minute. Let's try to find the circuit breaker that feeds this receptacle. We'll use the outlet plug adapter that came with the test lead kit. I'll use the non-contact voltage tester to see if the receptacle is energized. Yep, it's live. We'll plug in the transmitter and then turn it on. There's a green lightning bolt indicating that the circuit is energized. Red LEDs indicating 120 volts, AC voltage, and that PPE is required for safety at that voltage level. Now let's go to the breaker panels. As you can see, the receiver is pegged at 99, which is the highest reading, but that's with the receiver set to maximum sensitivity. Let's go to level two, which is the second lowest setting, and see if we can find out which panel the circuit is in. The reading is higher on the sub panel, so we'll try to find the circuit breaker there first. Hmm, even at level two, we're pegged at 99 again. So we'll drop down to level one, which is the lowest setting. We'll start at the top left and move down. Hmm. 
Looks like the bottom breaker has the highest reading. Let's check the right side. The third breaker had the highest reading, but it was still lower than the breaker on the left. So it looks like the bottom breaker on the left is feeding the receptacle. Notice the lightning bolt on the receiver display, like the one on the transmitter. If we have the right circuit, that lightning bolt will go out when the power is cut off. I like this feature because it lets us verify the circuit without a second person or running back and forth. Okay, let's cut the circuit. The reading is gone, so that's a good sign. Let's turn up the sensitivity to see if the lightning bolt is gone. Yup, the reading is back, but the lightning bolt is gone. So we found the correct breaker for sure. Okay, let's try that again with the circuit turned off. This time, we're seeing nothing at the lowest setting. The signal is much stronger on energized conductors. I'll turn the sensitivity up to four. Ah, now we're getting some readings again. From the top left, we can see the signal is stronger as we get closer to the bottom breaker. Okay, we're pegged at 99 on the bottom breaker. Let's check the other side. With the circuit de-energized, it's even more obvious that the bottom breaker on the left is our circuit. Let's try another test. What if we wanted to find out what else was on this circuit? We'll turn the breaker back on. I think I'll drop the sensitivity down to level three. Let's see, the receptacle on the right is clearly on the same circuit. And so is the next one over. Both peg the receiver at 99. Let's check these ones over here on the other side of the room. Nope, no reading at all. This one is not on the circuit. Let's check this one. Nope, neither is this one. How about these light switches over here? Ah, it looks like these two light switches are on the same circuit. Let's shut off the circuit breaker and find out if we're right. The lights are clearly off now, so we are right about those. Let's turn on the non-contact voltage tester and check the receptacles. Yep, this one is out. And yeah, so is this one. Let's check the two that didn't appear to be on the circuit. This one is still live. And yep, so is this one. Well, the tracer worked correctly, pretty cool. But can we trace a cable in a wall or find a ground fault or a short circuit? Before we try that, I wanna let you know how to win a circuit tracer. Simply let me know in the comments why you would want a circuit tracer. That's it. Once the video has 200 comments or 100,000 views, I'll pick two random commenters and let you know that you won. I'll post the rules down in the video description as well. Good luck. Okay, let's turn the circuit breaker back on and try to trace a cable in the wall. At the highest setting, I can see the cable comes out of the top of this box. Then at about three feet high, it changes direction and goes to the right. This makes sense because we know the two receptacles on the right are on the same circuit. If I turn the sensitivity down, we can get a more precise location of the cable. But where does it go from here? It looks like it goes up parallel to the door and up into the ceiling. The back side of the door is unfinished, so we can check that out. Yep, the wire runs up beside the door and into the ceiling. If the signal was too weak, we could use a different connector to create a remote return path. Let's create a short circuit and see if the tracer can locate that. We'll short line to ground on this extension cord. This time, we'll use the leads with the alligator clips. We can use the continuity tester to determine if we have a line to ground short or a ground fault. I'll connect the hot blade on the plug to the red lead on the transmitter. Then I'll connect the ground pin on the plug to the black lead on the transmitter. We can see that we do have continuity and the circuit has a direct short to ground. 
Now we'll take our receiver and locate the short. With the sensitivity set to max, the signal is pegging the receiver at 99. I'll reduce the sensitivity setting on the receiver to the lowest level. A few feet into the cord, I'm getting a weak reading. Then about 15 feet in, I'm still getting a weak reading. A foot from the end where I have the short, the reading is starting to increase. And at the end, we're pegging the transmitter to 99 again, which is the highest numeric reading. So this is the location of our short. The tracer can also locate splicing errors where two neutrals are connected together that shouldn't be, which can cause combo AFCI breakers to trip. The test for this is the same as our short circuit test, but this time we would connect the two neutral wires at the panel to the test leads rather than the hot and ground blades on the extension cord. These sure trace circuit tracers by Ideal are very handy tools. They can also be used to find opens, be used on low voltage systems, communication and data applications, and even on three-phase systems. If you're interested, be sure to check out the links in the video description. I'll let YouTube recommend a video right here for you to watch next. I want to thank Ideal for sponsoring today's video. Good luck on the giveaway, and I'll see you on the next one.